Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish. With this week, we're taking its less than one second appearance in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse to make arroz con pollo. I was obviously super stoked to see it this past weekend and spot some food, which I'll be recreating when the movie comes out on streaming, so I don't have to try to take a video in a movie theater. Anyway, arroz con pollo begins with sofrito, which as Omi Hopper taught me, is an intuition guided combination of a few specific aromatics. One small yellow onion, one cubanelle and green pepper, both cut down to food processor appropriate chunks because that's where they're headed, along with a nut in significant amount of garlic, I'm going with six cloves cut in half, and if you can get a hold of them, three to four ahi dulce peppers, which look like scotch bonnets but are in fact not spicy. We're also adding about three quarters of a cup of culantro and a cup of cilantro, both of which taste like death to me, but luckily that enzyme gets deactivated or whatever when it gets cooked. Anyway, we're processing this into like a chunky paste, scraping down the sides of the food processor if you overstuffed it like I did. This stuff freezes beautifully, especially in ice cube trays for pre-portioned dispatch, but for today we're only going to need about a third of a cup of it. Next Next up, a whole half of our dish's namesake, the chicken. I'm going with thighs and drumsticks, of which I'm removing the skin. Definitely not the most authentic move, but I don't like flabby skin. Now, especially for stewed meat, it's best practice to lightly salt and let sit at room temperature for at least 30 minutes before cooking. And we're getting these guys started first by searing in a quarter cup of neutral flavored oil like vegetable or corn, dropping them into a preheated Dutch oven and searing them in batches if necessary until they're lightly golden brown and a beautiful fond is formed on the bottom of the pot, which we're gonna start scraping up by virtue of a small half onion diced and a solid third of a cup of our sofrito, both of which release moisture as they cook, helping you scrape all the flavorful stuff off the bottom of the pot. Next up, we're briefly toasting the spices. Two teaspoons sazon with achiote, a cube of chicken bouillon, half a teaspoon dried oregano, and a quarter cup chopped pimento peppers. We're just giving that like 30 seconds of heat before adding a half cup of pitted green olives and the other half of the name, the rice. Two and a half cups of thoroughly washed medium or long grain white rice, which likewise we're gonna toast for about 30 seconds before adding the wet stuff. Half a cup of plain canned tomato sauce, Sauce and three to three and a half cups of water, but that could vary depending on your rice. Just check the package and use that proportion. Next and last, we're adding the chicken and its accumulated juices and one solitary bay leaf. Give things a little stir to ensure even distribution, and then it's time to shut this guy down. We're making our Dutch oven steam tight by wrapping the lid in aluminum foil, and once we're back up to a simmer, locking things up tight and cooking your rice to about 80% doneness, usually 10 to 12 minutes. At this point, we're giving things a gentle stir, testing the rice for doneness, adding a splash of water if things seem a little dry, shutting back down and cooking to a state of completion anywhere from five to ten minutes. Make sure that your rice is properly cooked but slightly toothsome. Season to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. We're doing this last because some of those seasonings already have salt in them and that's all there is to it. Serve it up on a big old platter with some lime slices and garnish with big leafy cilantro that can be easily picked off by your more averse diners. And there you have it, arroz con pollo. As essential a Latin American dish as ever there was and on the table in about an hour. And while this ended up being delicious and well spiced and comforting, I started to wonder if this was the actual dish that he was eating in Spider-Verse. Then after doing some research and seeing that Miles' mom is Puerto Rican and that the national dish of Puerto Rico is arroz con gandules, it seemed like the ham and pigeon pea version of this dish might be more accurate. We're starting with the same quarter cup of oil, but this time browning up some cubed country ham or smoked pork shoulder until it and the bottom of the pot have both picked up a little bit of color. Next up, of course, is our third cup of sofrito and maybe a half a cup, why not? Which likewise we're going to saute and use to help scrape up that stuff off the bottom of the pot. Half cup green olives, quarter cup chopped pimentos, and an option tablespoon of capers are headed in next, followed by one and a half teaspoons of sazon with achiote, three quarters of a teaspoon adobo, and if you can find it, one teaspoon of ham concentrate powder, which is as fun to say as it is to cook with. Then we're adding our thoroughly washed rice, giving a quick toast, our half cup of tomato sauce, and this time a 15 ounce can of gandules. I'm going with green ones, including their liquid in the can. Nobody gets left behind. Give that a stir, bring it back up to a simmer, and then from here on out, it's pretty much the same procedure as before. Add your cooking water or chicken stock if you want flavor bonus points, one bay leaf, and then shut things down for its two-stage cooking process. Season to taste with salt and pepper, add another splash of water if necessary, and cook to a state of doneness. Plate it up, this time in a much smoother, sculpted pile for some reason. Garnish with limes on the side because you didn't like the way they looked before. Sprinkle with cilantro, and there you have it. Arroz con gandules, which I think looks a little bit more accurate. And I think I actually liked it better. That ham concentrate powder is something else. Anyway, I was obviously overjoyed to finally see across the Spider-Verse, but until I can go back and see it again, this will tide me over. That and rewatching the first one another 50 times.